Hey everybody, PJ back with Exotic Car Hacks and today we are going to be looking at how to inspect the car when you are buying it or should I say when you're having someone else inspect it, how to know if it has been damaged or not. So one of the biggest and most important aspects of buying an exotic car is ensuring you don't buy one that has one been crashed, two has had any major or bad paint work. And so today we're gonna walk you through the basics that you need to look for when looking at a car. Some of the things I do if I have a chance to look at the car or have an inspector do for me if I'm not close enough to the car. Now, again, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and interact with me in these videos. And of course, don't forget to make, take my training on how to hack your way into your next exotic so you can either break away free or make money driving a car. That is what we teach at Exotic Car Hacks. We are now over 15,000 strong and we would love for you to join us. But today we're going to look at the basics of what makes I guess a car look damaged or not. And we'll use some of the aspects here. Every car in my personal collection here is flawless, meaning no car here has paintwork except for this Fiat here, which we're gonna look at uh, in detail kind of to show the difference. But I wanna show you on this car because it's right in front of you and it's pretty large. Some of the basic core dynamics of what you can identify here uh, on a car in general. And some of the ways we take a look at if a car has had paintwork or has any issues is we look at the generic aspects uh, of the lines and the flow. So there is one big difference in which we can see that something has been messed with or not if a car has had an issue and usually it's in the front and the back of the car. The two things we can look for are the alignment here of the hood and the bumper and the fender and the hood. And one of the things a lot of people do is they'll come here, look for the line, and there are more clear indicators such as how big is the gap from here, here, and here, right? Is there consistency on this side versus this side? Is there consistency on both fenders? Now, there are adjustments to hood and things can change, but you have to start wondering why these things have been changed. So was the hood removed previously? Was there motor work or any type of axle work done here? Suspension work or anything that required that? So you gotta kinda look at that, but these are some of the basic details right away on the hood and the alignment to the fender and the bumper that tell you immediately if there is an instant red flag to look after when looking at if a car had paintwork. The other angle which you can do is usually run your hand here at the bottom uh, behind each panel that you can, such as the doors, the fenders, etc., and see if there's a harder feeling to the paint under versus the paint on top. Partially because if repaints are done, the heat from the repaint will make the surface very smooth, but will basically crust because of the marking of the tape, because people put tape here to not paint over stuff, that tape will basically, because of the heat, become crusted into the paint, but under, so that way you can feel the rough edges. That's just one clear way. Now, so on the front, we usually look at these basic lines around the hood and the fenders, but here on the back end of the car, because obviously the two most vulnerable parts to have hit are the front and rear bumpers, we look at the lines here, which is the alignment basically at the bottom edge of the bumper and the fender. That's one of the biggest first places they get hit. And then on, for example, super exotics like the Lamborghini, we look at the amount of distance here between this top piece uh, and then on this side as well. So are they matching, are they not? This is a very unique car, meaning it's very unlikely. And I'm gonna show you here on this uh, Urs, which is a more, I guess, daily drivable car where you would notice things because this is basically an Audi chassis, but you would see a lot of differences here in this particular panel if there was an issue. And you would also see these differences looking at the hood here, the alignment of the front, and then of course at these top parts as well here. So it gives you an idea on a car like this. Now, on the back of it, because this is again, like I said, a more generic car, you would see the lines either mismatching here, uh, specifically here, uh, anywhere that there's a connector. And of course, one of the big ones that people aren't talking about a lot are the frame of the car itself, which is you know all of this and how clean that is on both sides. When you open and close the hood, the trunk of the car, I should say, you also notice how smooth the operation is and what causes it to work or not. So all of these things are, are the basics of what you can look at when looking at a car for any type of paintwork immediately and determine if the car most likely is going to have to need a paint meter or not. Now keep in mind that if you're paint metering a car, most front bumpers are made out of urethane these days, so you won't be able to paint meter the front bumpers, which is usually the most hit places. And 
repainted front bumpers aren't necessarily a red flag or something so dramatic that you should walk away from the car. Accidents and repaints are two different things. And while there is an issue with, for example, a repainted fender or a repainted door, there isn't as big of an issue about a repainted front bumper, especially on a more than seven-year-old car. You'll notice that. Now, there are other cars like this perfect, flawless GT3 RS, which literally has not a scratch or ding or anything on it, that would matter because of what we call PTS paint. So whenever the paint is special, just like on this Aventador with Neo Nemesis or this Voodoo Blue PTS, these are very rare colors, very hard to match, and for that reason, we would never want any type of paintwork on a car like this. However, on a Urs, if let's say this front bumper would have been repainted, it would have been okay. It wouldn't have been the end of the world, partially because, again, uh, a white car is much easier to match, and there isn't anything really special. On the Ferrari, on the other hand, it would be the exact same thing, and it would be a significant problem to find any type of paintwork because of the collectability and rarity, of course, of the color. And so we wouldn't, again, buy a car that has any type of paintwork if it's on a car like this or any of these cars I've shown you. But let's say my Urs was a used car with 10,000 miles. It's not, but let's say it was four or five years old with 10,000 miles. Someone told me that the front bumper was repainted. It wouldn't bother me that much or it wouldn't change my entire dynamic of I shouldn't have bought that car and so on and so forth. So I wanted to give you that concept so you can look at it. Now let's go over here and take a brief look at this Fiat because this Fiat has had paintwork. I mean, this is a wide body car. Uh, it's very different than a normal uh, Fiat. And you can see a couple of very quick uh, offset here to the car. The front bumper is brand new, uh, meaning it's based uh, on a new bumper, that's so it was added after. These fenders here were also added, and I wish you could feel it, because you can really feel the tape here uh, and the difference in, in, the, uh, in the paint quality in terms of the touch, the smoothness of one versus the other. And this bottom panel has also been painted, of course, and then this top. Now on the surface, you might see this is a little bit more yellow than this, partially because it has clear film over it. This clear film has basically gotten old over the years. This is not a negative. But a car like this, for example, can absolutely have paintwork. But you can still check that it hasn't been necessarily in an accident for having had that paintwork. All the panels match while everything uh, looks good, even though, even though these particular pieces have been painted, it does not present uh, an issue with such a car, partially because it's a Fiat, uh, partially because, again, it has been modified, and the modifications are what uh, has become the cost and nothing else. So I wanted to kind of point you out to how to understand paintwork on a car. And again, remember that lines like right here along the door, you can open the doors and basically look at the line and see if there's any issue here in terms of paint. Uh, those are the most, if you've ever seen people open car doors and check for paint lines, that's why they do that to make sure doors weren't repainted. They will open hoods and do the same under the hood here. Uh, they will check here. Any opening they can get into where tape would have been put, because obviously tape would be here to paint this and prevent this from getting painted if there was an accident here, then therefore the tape would, the tape mark would, would ultimately create a little crust here. Same with under here. You could go under and check uh, if any type of issues, the hood was not painted on this car, so we can tell that by just running our finger through it. Very simply, there are very basic steps you can take to ensure that a car was not painted or, or inaccurate. And then you can see, if you come closer here, you'll see here that you have, for example, a gap here. You'll notice that the alignment here isn't perfect, as you can see. And like I said previously, remember that this bumper not only has been refitted and repainted because it's a new bumper, not the original bumper, uh, and you can see that on both sides. The fit and finish isn't as good, and it also fits here. You can clearly see here that it's not as smooth as, let's say, the Lamborghini or some of these cars that came from the factory exactly as they've come. This is basic, basically showing you that, again, not only the paint doesn't match, but here you have this gap on the simple basis that, again, some of these parts are not factory parts, but it does not indicate an accident necessarily for that sake. So today I just wanted to take you to the basic understanding of how paintwork works on a car and why it matters or why it doesn't, and certainly why certain cars are much easier to detect than others. But remember, if you don't have access to being able to tell if a car had paintwork because you're buying it out of state, ensure that a third-party inspector looks at the car, do a private purchase inspection, go to the entire inspection sheet we have under the Exotic Car Hacks course. So once you're in the course, go under resources, take a look at that sheet and use that uh, to get yourself further in the inspection process and ensure that not only the car is looked at mechanically, but you can also detect for paintwork. Because while on the car like the Fiat, this will not stop someone from buying it because this part was repainted and so on and so forth, even if it doesn't show as an accident on the Carfax, because most 
Carfax records won't show accidents, even if they occurred, just on the basis that they have to be reported in order to show up. However, there's still an opportunity for you uh, generally to still make you good buying decision by having a third party inspector look at your purchase and as a result ensure that you, even though you're not near the car, you're still getting the quality you're expecting or paying for with the car you are buying. And again, don't think that automatically having repainted front bumpers even on a Ferrari, on a normal Ferrari, means that it's a no-go, it's horrible, etc. You just have to figure out what the history behind it is and if there was any damage on there that's going to get worse over time. And that's basically our video for today. Very simple, so like, subscribe, uh, and of course turn on notifications to learn more about the exotic car world and how to get in and out of exotic from a real owner's perspective. And of course, please leave a comment. What was the worst car you bought? And specifically, how did you get screwed uh, because of paintwork? I'd love to know your interaction and your specific experiences. Put them in there and I'll catch you on the next video for Exotic Car Hacks.